Good noontide, Howard Wig. Think Tech Hawaii, Code Green. I have two really, really distinguished guests today, Yuko Kazawa and Peng Chuan Liu. And they are the best people I've ever heard about building community. And what do we mean by that? I'm in the energy efficiency field, and I think that energy efficiency is the greatest thing since sliced bread. All my colleagues do, except we get pushback. And often legislative session is going on. Often we meet in the Capitol building and we say A and they say B. And it's an adversarial process. And anybody in the audience can identify with that. Yuko and Feng Chuan are the masters of avoiding adversarial relationships and building community and coming to mutual agreement. And so I so much am uh, thankful for your being here. They both are the employees of 30 Meter Telescope and all of us remember and still hear to this day the opposition to the telescope. I was on the Big Island at the height of the protest movement and you go over Saddle Road and there was actually a stoplight installed right at the peak where the road goes off to Mauna Kea and hundreds of people swarming around. This was a massive protest. And so the 30 meter people have a lot of work to do and they have hired the best of the best to do that work and build community. So welcome to you both. And who wants to be the first speaker? I can just briefly introduce myself, Feng Chuan Liu, the project manager for the last three plus years. I work and live in Hilo and moved from uh, California and uh, Yuko Kakasu. You want to say a few words? Sure. Thank you so much, Howard, for having us. It is such a great honor uh, to uh, be invited to your program. Uh, my name is Yuko Kakazu. Um, I manage education and outreach programs for the 30 meter telescope international observatory. I joined TMT about two years ago and I've been working closely with our new project manager, French Juan Liu in Hilo. Okay. Mahalo Yuko and Mahalo Howard and, and really, uh, uh, very much appreciated for this opportunity to speak here. I'm a big believer of sustainability, but today we want to talk about different aspects of sustainability. It's our understanding of uh, sustainable astronomy. Um, and yes, it is true that um, TMT, if and when built, will be a, a, a very powerful scientific machine that will produce sustainable scientific discoveries that will revolutionize our understanding our place within the universe and, and uh, understanding the universe itself. However, uh, the events in 2019 all taught us that by itself is not enough. And the protest and the rest of the protests, as Howard mentioned, really taught us that uh, the approach we took leading up to 2019 was far from sustainable. And it caused uh, divisions, and conflict within the community, within among family and friends. We very much, on behalf of our organization, we very much apologize for that. And since then, since 2019, we have fundamentally changed our approach to community engagement. This is not a public relations approach. It is a fundamental change from what we believe in to um, the sustained uh, TMT as part of the astronomy community. We understand that ultimately the decision on the future of TMT and Maratea rests with the Hawaii and especially the native Hawaiian community. We respect that fact. We also believe that it's our kuleana, it's our responsibility to learn from our past mistakes, to do what is right for the community, to help heal the visions, and to build long-term trust and relationships. The Hawaiian words is uh, seven generations long. And we want to contribute to a better future for everyone in Hawaii, especially those in underserved communities. 
And that is how we want to contribute to a sustainable astronomy. And I want to say from the um, astronomy point of view in terms of the next generation large telescopes, this is an optical telescope in the wavelengths that the eyes can see. And we're not alone. European nations are building a 39-meter telescope in Chile, in the Southern Hemisphere. And nearby, there's um, another U.S.-led effort uh, coalition is building a 24, 25-meter uh, telescope in Chile. And TMT, the 30-meter telescope, is the only large telescope, a future large telescope, in the Northern Hemisphere. And we have combined our efforts together between TMT, GMT, as a U.S. combined effort and seeking National Science Foundation um, investment so that uh, the astronomers in U.S. can have access to both northern and have the southern skies. Um, this is only pop. Yes. Oh, go ahead. Well, let me jump in for a minute because I, I loved your uh, statement to build trust. Uh, I've read a couple of books written by Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs, the toughest, toughest military people in all of the U.S., maybe in the whole world. And when you get through with a book and you ask what this was all about, why are they so effective as a team when there's all this chaos, this fire, noise, everything going on around them, and they work as a team? The basic reason is they have worked together and gone through adversarial situations so long that they build trust among one another. In the roughest of times, they know that this guy is going to do this, this guy is going to do this, and we're going to win the battle. So I love that phrase, uh, build trust. Thank you. And it is absolutely essential. We're learning. And... If I could mention that um, from the get-go, TMT actually understand that Monarchy is a very special place, and we want to lower our, the profile of the observatory. And we have designed the observatories, even though the mirror itself is three and a half times the size of, for example, existing telescope, Super or Gemini. The profile of the structure is only about 20 to 30 percent taller and it's smaller than the other two large telescopes and um, it is um, recently there was a, a few couple of years ago there was a national academy run a, every 10 years or so they run a, a survey to have the best uh, astronomy minds together to rank the project that's uh, uh, the, the most important for astronomy, both in space and ground. TMT and GMT together uh, as a combined effort was ranked number one on the ground uh, based uh, project. And so this allows National Science Foundation a chance, opportunity to uh, look into uh, TMT and possibly uh, invest in TMT. I want to say that Last year, we received six and a half million dollars from National Science Foundation, but this has a, it's not a um, commitment to construction. It is not a commitment to future funding. It is an interim effort to support a, a design effort. Uh, the future commitment, if any, by NSF, uh, we don't want to speak for NSF, but our understanding is that a future commitment would have to rely on uh, multiple things. One is uh, to make sure they fully um, review the project, every aspect of the project. Another important aspect is they complete the federal version of the environmental impact statement, so including the cultural consultation or the so-called Section 106 process. Uh, meanwhile, I would say um, we have all benefit from the tech technology both the 30 meter telescope and the 39 meter telescope, and also the one in space. You probably have all heard the James Webb Space Telescope, JWST. Um, we're all using the technology uh, Keck matured, which puts the segments mirrors together and make them perform as a monolithic mirror. 
Uh, TMT is three times the diameter of CAD, uh, nine times the collecting area. But when you look at the real important thing, which is to identify and detect the very faint point sources from far away in the universe, the TMT capability is 81 times uh, more capable than CAD. So this is the type of uh, revolutionary improvement. And let me point out, you, you mentioned money. Uh, if this is built, it's going to be a magnet for astronomers, astronomers worldwide to come and participate yes. in, in the viewing. And that uh, brings dollars to the Big Island. And th these are highly paid people. They're probably going to stay in four or five star hotels, eat out lavishly, you know, bring some money into the, uh, the Big Island economy and boost employment. And the existence of this meter or uh, telescope, if it happens, is in itself going to bring employment. That it'll be uh, lo local people. We'll have uh, good jobs there. Thank you, Howard and Mahalo. This is actually uh, it's a good segue. We want to cut carbon footprint. So we actually are actively trying to reduce travel to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. We also want to stay in regular hotels, not necessarily luxury hotels, but <laughs> but we contribute to local e uh, economy in uh, uh, more than just being here, traveling over here, we are in the process of converting a a Hilo facility to actually bring actual works to Hilo. Uh, we need to build several hundreds of these segments to put together a certain meter telescope, and we are in in the process of of doing that assembly here in Hilo, hiring local workforce, local students, giving opportunities. Uh, and then contribute in a meaningful way to local economy. And this, we're doing this without any condition, precondition. We believe this is the right thing to do, and and we need to do that. So, so you're bringing young people up, also involving them and saying this is the prospect. Yeah, that, that... and we look forward to. And you hear from Yuko on the detailed activities will work with schools and young people, but, but even for this effort, building astronomy instruments here, we are working with UH Hilo, with uh, UH IFA here, with community college, uh, how to, you know, work together, our workforce and students training. So, um, so we have proactively in the last three years or so, practically reached out to hundreds of people. Who uh, we talk to our own people who are supporters and, and people in the middle, but we proactively reach out to the people who actually protest against. We've talked to many hundreds of them, and uh, I would say every conversation ends much better than it starts. Um, uh, this is a, a great way to, in a private setting, in a general conversation, to really um, understand and learn. Um, the true opinions uh, from both sides and to understand what mistakes we made, how we can do the right thing together, what the community generally care about, how we can work on the future together uh, for the long term. None of what we do is for short term. So that's my summary. <laughs> I will turn it to you, Ko. Sure. Well, thank you for um, all the wonderful speech, Quintuan. Uh, I would like to re-emphasize the major changes um, that took place within the TMD organization over the last few years, the massive protest in 2019, and in fact, the COVID-19 pandemic gave us an opportunity to pause, reflect on our past and seek a new approach. So at TMT, we now have new leadership. When Chuan became project manager, and the first thing he did as a project manager was to move to Hilo, Hawaii, to better engage with local communities, to listen to and learn from community members, in particular, those people who were traditionally opposed to the project. Um, we are now, we have a new team based in Hilo, Hawaii, and we are making new partnerships. So 
I manage education and workforce programs for the 30 meter telescope. And our theme is community partnership. All our programs are community driven. So they are led by our partners, community partners, collaborators, um, and designed to meet the unique needs and interest of local community members. Uh, through these grassroots dialogues with community members, in particular, um, those um, people who have traditionally opposed the project, we actually realized that we do have a shared vision we all want to create better future for our Kiki or our future uh, generations. So with that in mind, we are co-creating programs to benefit our local community, in particular Kiki. And we have four categories in our education and workforce uh, programs. The first one is K-12 education and workforce development programs. And the second one is culture-based learning. So we work with cultural practitioners and wayfinding navigators, experts. And the third category is the environment protection and conservation. So we are working with Bonnaker reforestation people and we actively support their uh, invasive weed pool activities, as well as the native bird palila, the endangered bird, a study of Mauna Kea. And as Fuen Chuan said, we're really trying to cut down business troubles to reduce the CO2 carbon footprint um, for our earth. And all these programs, as I said, is led by our community partners. And regardless of the construction of TMT on Mauna Kea, we are committed to do this because this is the right thing. This is the pono thing to do for the community. So I want to emphasize this because this is so important. Regardless of the future of TMT on Mauna Kea, we are committed to do the right thing for the community, for the future of our Keiki children. And ultimately, the decision of TMT on Mauna Kea rests with Hawaii community and Native Hawaiian communities, not us. We are here to be a good neighbor, good citizen in Hawaii and working together with our partners. And we're listening to and learning from community members every day. So if you have any questions or suggestions, we are willing to learn more and hear from you. You, you know, you brought something to mind in uh, my work, namely we had uh, a strong opposition from a big industry here in Hawaii to one of our programs. And we kept saying, well, are you opposed to this? Are you opposed to that? Well, no, not really. And finally, we had dialogue long enough where they put in writing, in email, this is what concerns us. And this, instead of this great big thing, this turned out to be a teeny little portion of the whole thing. And we said, oh. We have no objection to that. We can change that language. So maybe this is a type of uh, uh, process that you folks are going through. Right, absolutely. I think in the past, there has not been enough dialogues with community members, in particular, those people in rural areas and Hawaiian communities. Uh, we did not engage with these people. And so that was the uh, issue. We know we recognize that. And this is why we are committed to talking to or listening to and learning from our community members. And this is the main reason when Trump moved um, to Hawaii over two years ago. Yeah, Howard, I want to pick up on that. It's a very good point. Uh, in fact, I stopped using the phrase supporters were opponents. Mm -hmm. 
And this was a regular thing a few years ago. On, and uh, once it, it doesn't matter your position uh, on this subject. And once we start talking, we start having genuine conversations and truly express our opinion. We find always find out um, we have much more in common, and the areas that uh, we differ. As you mentioned, Howard. We can work together on this. It's just not that we're not asking anybody to change position. It's just have a true understanding of how we how we feel about things, how we view things, how we value things. And and we are equal humans and we always find that we have a lot more in common than we are apart. Yeah, it's when when you really start getting down down to the uh, nitty gritty here. Mm -hmm. That's a, again, I give the example of you oppose the whole thing. And then when you start talking, start talking, that opposition just shrinks and shrinks and shrinks. And then you say, oh, okay, now we can come together with this. Yeah. And, and, I, and I would not. You, you've had that experience many times, I imagine, already. Yeah. Yeah, I would add everything starts with respect. When we sit down, we respect each other, and the conversation starts and is based on respect, mutual respect. It always leads to a better place. Yeah, you look at some of the big, huge issues that are causing the whole world problems right now, costing yeah. millions of dollars, costing thousands of lives. and. I think it all boils down to respect. How can we respect one another? But, yeah. So that's you. You guys are, are geniuses at that. I I think. Thank you. Yeah. No, we learned this from the conversations in the community. Mm -hmm. It's not. It's actually when it comes to the to the bottom line. It's actually very simple. It is uh, so complicated and so complex. It is actually very simple. We are all humans. We want to respect each other. We want to do what's good for the community, for people on the islands. And, uh, and that's a starting point and it's a long term. Yeah, another good example might be our presidential situation. Now there's uh, very little respect on this side for that side and vice versa. There's uh -huh. a lot of disrespect and it's uh, pretty well tearing our country apart right now. Yeah. So we, we should multiply you guys by about a thousand times and bring the to, to do this. Thank yeah. you. Yuko, can you give any examples of meetings that you had where you started apart and then came together, came together? Um, sure. I would like to actually talk about the, some of the education um, programs that, that we started with our community partners a few years ago. So as you know, the COVID-19 pandemic um, really impacted our students in Hawaii because uh, there was no in-person teaching. Everything was online. And a lot of students, in fact, a lot of uh, students in rural area even didn't have internet. So without internet, how can you take online classes? It's impossible, right? So the impact of COVID-19 was quite severe among students, in particular underserved students. So after um, the pandemic and when school started in-person uh, teaching in 2021 fall, we asked to local school teachers, how can we assist students? And the answer was, well, come to school and help assist our students by providing tutoring assistance. So at TMT, we started going to schools, uh, local schools every week, and um, it's been amazing experience. So this tutoring program is led by local teachers. We go there, assist students as community um, uh, members, and uh, in, and it's been very successful uh, for reducing the number of students uh, failing multiple classes, but it's also helping us 
to understand, better understand the school's and students' real needs and interests, and helping us to become a better communicator, better teacher, and have a deeper sense of community. So the sense of community is critical for our work, and this is what we believe in TMT. And in the process, you're, you're tutoring them, there, I guess, in general ways, but you two are either scientists or almost scientists, and you're probably pointing the students to the fact that science could mean a whole lot to them in, in the future. Uh, if they take science courses, their future absolutely will be uh, better. Yeah, a lot of students tell us, oh, gee, we didn't know how fun science is, how fun mm -hmm. math is. Because once you get it, you get it. And it's so much fun. So some of my students are now getting A plus and A. So she doesn't no longer come to this tutoring program. And I miss her. But this is wonderful. And this is extremely rewarding for us. Yeah, yeah. It, it sets a light bulb off, off in their heads. Ah, there's a whole and it, new world out there. And it is amazing to see them believing themselves. I can do this. You, you know, I, I can get A's and B's. It's, it's, a, it's an entirely life changing. Just watch. Wow. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. You, got, you, you do a whole uh, paradigm shift in their, their self image. Yeah. And it's science based. Yeah, we very yeah. much appreciate such opportunities and uh, contributing and also learning from such experience from your students. And we've just got a teeny little time left. A very brief question. Do you connect or point out that the Hawaiians who came here from Tahiti and the Marquesas Islands, they were great astronomers. They could not have made it here without knowledge of astronomy. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And in fact, we are working with a um, um, Polynesian wayfinding navigator to uh, uh, new programs for local students. And it's been such an honor for us. And I'm myself learning a lot about traditional wayfinding and navigation. And some of the concept between Kumulipo and the cosmology, there's a lot in common as well. Wow. Well, on that very, very cheery note, we have run out of time. And Yuko and Fen Chuan, thank you so much. And again, this program will be archived. You can use it for educational purposes uh, down, down the road here. And if I can find other opportunities for you to speak, I'm definitely going to offer them to you. So uh, I'll have for this yeah. opportunity. Yeah. So, Howard Wake, Code Green, bye-bye, and see you next time.